Infinity Part 79. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the latest Balance Council changes that are that have just been revealed. The game is currently not playable, uh, but we do have a Reddit thread where somebody compiled all the changes based on what you they saw on the website. You can uh, like playgone.com usually and see the changes about a little bit earlier. Um, So here we go. Another month and another set of power creep, it seems, at first glance. Uh, Chinese players, uh, I think, were the ones who were doing this. Pir the Chinese community, rather. Pirates Cove, Reckless Flurry, and Passive Fury all got a provision. So now Reckless Flurry is 16 provisions because all Skellige leaders must have too many provisions for some reason. Uh, this is fine, probably. But Cove did not need a 16th provision. Holy Christ. Just because people don't play something doesn't mean it needs to be buffed. Renfrey went to 15 provisions. Militally got nerfed. Madoc got nerfed. Unnecessary. If you nerf Letho, it's the same thing, but won't affect the other non-OP versions of Madoc. Flotsam got nerfed, Sigvald got nerfed, also unnecessary. Iris Companions got nerfed, also not necessary, but you can thank Nikar for that one. Temerian Infantry, yep, good. Ulrich, 11 to 10, good change. Novigrad Injustice, 10 to 9, good change, but it's going to make Dwarves even stronger now. Um, for Syndicate, it's fine, but like for Dwarves, this is like, for ST Dwarves, this is even more. And SC Dwarves leader also has 17 provisions, so everyone's going to be playing Point Slam Dwarves now. Ithlane went to 9 provisions. What? What card even is this? Carry over ST, I guess. It's still only six plus four, so it's really only good on on torque. Not a card that you put in your your deck for like, oh, I have an important engine I want to buff. Nah, nah. Th this is a card that you just play for torque uh, carry over abuse. Great, good job. Um, Naglefar from nine to eight. This is Metallic Danny instead of buffing Imlorith, like his votes suggested that he should. Frog mating season, seven provisions, just randomly buffing everything movement. Perko from eight to seven, power creep is a good thing. Uh, Tree and boar seven to six, this is a good change, this was necessary. Fur cart seven to six, also another good change. Informant from five to four, terrible change. It's meant to like bludgeon, assimilate into being viable again, but now every Nilf card deck can just put in informants, because why not? If, if your opponent ever plays a, a good bronze, now you have a good bronze. <laughs> but except yours procs assimilate. And clogs your opponent's board. Like, don't underestimate the power of clog. Frogs were good. They board clogged, but they were perfectly fine and super playable. People were playing them in even, you know, non-movement decks. And there was no reason to buff them, but P-Star... Uh, decided that and Necrotal, Necrotal, the guy who brought you the uh, ten for five Demon Smugglers, that somehow didn't make pirates more fun to play in any way whatsoever. Uh, and then Chinese community made Radea nine power Horson Junior. This is Nick R four to five Milena. This was a bunch of people, including us. We voted for this. Not going to three to four. Here we go again. Oh, let me zoom in a little bit. Um. And if anybody wants the changes, here you go. Edit com balance. There you go. Tell them who's buffing Nausicaa. I don't know. Ch Chinese players probably. 
Nilfgaardian Knight 8 to 9. This is Metallic Danny. Imperial Diviner. This is uh, Nick R. Knight Errant. This is Danny as well. For no reason, buffing NR Knights. This was the card that was specifically nerfed by CDPR after tons of feedback from us players, including pros, that this was too good because you could AA it and instantly proc the Grace and there was zero counterplay. Casino Bouncers 4 to 5. This is a good change that I advocated a long time ago, back before Nick made them 4 provisions. And then we had to nerf them back to 5 provisions. And now it's going to be 5 and 5, although minus 1 coin. So it's really 9 for 5 with 1 thinning. This, finally, is an example of properly balanced thinners. Yeah, Phoenix, which we buffed to make it playable and suddenly was, got nerfed. Anyway, let's, let me, let me, just let me just get to it. 1 of 10. Fallen Knight. This is going to be a really strong card now. It's going to be just obnoxious, especially with Ulrich also buffed. Well, Hound, this is a good change, I guess. It's not going to matter much because it's still a terribly slow card, but it will be less dumb to play it. Some people will probably put one in their decks for Tyranelia value. Great Oak lost the power. Great. Should have never been buffed, but whatever. Danny, how come how come you didn't buff Imlarith? I mean, uh, Oak will still be very good. It will just be 17 for 12 instead of 18 for 12. It's really not that big a deal. Uh, Phoenix from 5 to 4 will no longer be played again. Or rather, honestly, never needed the buff, but like... Whatever. L Letho... From 5 power to 4 power. This will in no way, shape, or form make it any less abusive. You're still going to use it on Helga. You're still going to use it on Defender. You're still going to use it on Madoc. You're still going to use it on every single thing it was used on, like Rampali. One power is not going to do anything, but Nick R didn't understand that. Instead of nerfing Letho by one provision and not touching Madoc, we are now nerfing Letho by one power and nerfing Madoc by one provision. So now you're not allowed to play Madoc in Scoia'tael or Monsters or any other deck. And NG Madoc is also dead. But Sappers are also dead. Sappers are not one power, even though they were not a problem in anything outside of Slave Drivers. Treyhern lost the power because Nick put it in his thing because he didn't have anything else to nerf. Iteran minus one power. Again, same reason. Some people think this is a cheesy card. So they just nerfed it anyway. It's uh, people hate losing to stuff that involves Iteran, I guess. Roach got buffed for no reason. It is a very good card. It should be nerfed. It should be ten provisions. Why are we making every disloyal card to power? It's because they can't. They can't come up with a Uncle Bugdan. Precision Strike was the most uh, popular deck last season. Above 2,500. 30% of your opponents were playing that deck. That deck played Chariots. I didn't nerf Chariot because I don't think minus one power on Chariot does much to it other than make it be killable by Riptide. I voted for Skirmisher to go minus one provision and then I was going to vote for it to go plus one power, but that didn't go through. Um, Treyhern, whatever. Like, you guys don't have to nerf stuff. You don't have to minus power things. You could just leave that spot empty. Chariot's now two power if you play it on the back row. Lovely stuff. Musicians of Blaviken lost the power. That's probably a good change. Griffin Witcher Adept. Five to four. So not Griffin Witcher, but the Adept got reversed. So uh, neutral cards. Three of them lost a provision. One of them got a power. Four of them lost power. So eight changes to neutrals. Monsters. One card lost a provision. One card gained a power. Wait, what? Where are the cards? Oh, Walt Hunt Hound and Nagelfar. <laughs> Great. The number of people playing Frost will change absolutely not at all. Nagelfar just buffed Ogroids, basically. Buffed Warriors by Provision? How?
Top players didn't go through. Oh, yeah, the Chinese players. Like, uh, Reckless Flurry, but not Blaze of Glory. Uh, Pirate Solid Fury was arguably over nerfed. This was nerfed because of self wound. I think Vault is unnecessary, I think. So basically, it's another season where uh, Nick R and Metallic Danny decide everything and P Star. And basically, like, they're just saying if you're not a Russian player or something, just get the fuck out. And also, if you are one who has a brain, I guess you get to suffer. I can see nerf to Golden Necker already. Yeah. Like, they'll do this, and then they'll nerf Golden Necker. Like, just like they, they buffed Renfree by making Thinners 4P, and then they nerf Renfree. They're stupid. Th these are stupid changes, and if you think this way, I have... I have... Like, I cannot find within me to come to any other conclusion than you are incapable of logically processing the effects of your votes. You can call me toxic if you want. Like... When Sapper is a neutral card that's only OP and played in one... Mammoth, I didn't even vote for that. I didn't even have that recommended. What are you talking about? Uh, this is only played in one deck, and that deck plays Slave Drivers, which are a problem in every deck where they're played. And now, now you can't play SD Dragons anymore, which is like not a end of the world kind of thing. But why are we making less cards viable? Yeah, no, none of my changes went through. Um, like I said, I don't really have any influence on the council. We 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 don't have any. Like none of us have any influence with council. This only went in because P Star did it. Like they literally just have like hundreds of people willing to vote, and. Uh, they all vote the same way, and we don't. Is there anything I'm excited about from this patch? Mm. Like, what new decks have we enabled other than, like, Golden Necker hand buff? Maybe Assimilate the little buff? Maybe uh, Firesworn? But Firesworn's not going to do anything when the ladder's going to be full of these decks. Like, why would you play Firesworn when you can steal your opponent's Firesworn? Chinese did a lot in this console? Yeah, I can see that. Keystar is Scoof? What does that mean? This will change the description of Sargent to this card's power changes once a month? I mean, this is, this is the fundamental issue with the council biome. Is that... You know... 500 people can vote to make a change and 100 people can vote to revert it. It doesn't matter because we don't vote on the changes, right? Like, we don't give a yes or no to any change. Dreadnought underscore 115 so, just followed. No nerf to control? No. Like I said, I have no influence. It's me. You need people like me. Me and my 200-something viewers have zero influence on the Balance Council as well as, like, my YouTube audience. The only things that matter are Nick R and Metallic Danny and P Star. And you can see me predict all of this in my uh, list. I said Renfree, Companion, Maddox, plus one provision. 100% correct. Stapra, Phoenix, Idram, minus one power. 100% correct. Treasure, wait, did Treasure go through? Treasure did not go through. I hope Treasure would go through, but it didn't. Furco. Novi Justice did, Ulrich did, not DS Ire. Um, Casino Bouncers and Junior did go through, Meat Maker did not, Paul Knight, yes, went through, Priest did not. So that's at least good. Um, Diviner went through, Letho went through, Furcart, DMT, Informant went through, Vivian did not. I don't think DMT did as was is DMT here? No, DMT did not go through. Master Puppets did not go through. This would have been a good change. People are voting on cards factions they dislike? No. People are voting based on how Nick R and Metallic Dally, Danny and P-Star tell them to vote. That's it. Trian 4 is just going to be a 6 for 6. It's not going to be that juiced. It'll be fine. It'll be balanced. But, uh, 
People will try to play Golden Necker movement. They'll play it badly. Uh, Malena has six power, so is Tree and Boar. So that combo, if they have it round one, will be kind of annoying. When are we going to see the council results? We already have them. We are literally looking at them. Here you go. Yeah, Madoc does need to be 11 provisions. That's silly. But t tell that tell that to... The, these were my votes, right? These were my votes. Like I said, I didn't have Adept in here. I only had Griffin Witcher because it was actually played in, in top tier decks and Adept was not. Vigo because it deserves it, but nobody voted for that. Eudora deserves it, but nobody voted for that. Not nobody, but like not enough people. Caretrolled absolutely has deserved the nerf to 12p for a long time. Not enough people voted for that. Uh, Skirmisher is the much better way to, to nerf the Precision Strike deck rather than like Chariot. Um, this should have this should be five power, two, five provisions, two power, but we're never gonna get there. I was I was voting Jackpot uh, minus one provision because it shouldn't have extra. Um, Imlarith was a lot less played than Nagofar and is on the same should be on the same provision tier as Eudora, but didn't happen. Uh, here's what did go through. Diviner, Junior, yes, Meatmaker did not. Chariot, Letho, Oak, these all went through. Uh, Temerian, Iris Companion, Flotsam all went through. I also voted, I would have voted for Flotsam. I agreed with it. Uh, Furcart went through, DMT did not. And Informant went through. Is the Russian community? I don't know if I would say the Russian community, but I would say the, the, the votes that Nick R metallic danny and p star recommend are ruining the game yes uh like informant has no business being four provisions that's just fucking silly um uh, fallen knight i'm okay with it this i was not and unfortunately that didn't go through but bouncers yes that's a good change uh, somebody asked me what i'm going to be making first i'm going to be playing lots of syndicate syndicate's the only thing that's interesting right now Those, those, uh, seesaws, it's me, that's not the Russian streamer community. That's just, like, either Rush, uh, Chinese players or just random people. Uh, we got Musicians minus one power. That's a good change. This was a terrible change, unnecessary change. Luckily, Udalric didn't go through. So it seems like Nick R's, like, his second council and his first council, not all of the one-star votes went through. Like, this didn't go through. Uh, this didn't go through. Maybe he changed it. I don't know. But this didn't go through. Thank goodness. Udalric. Yeah, I'm so happy about this. Not going through. Ulrich straight into spawn. He spawn? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if Ulrich I'll play it or not. Fall at night. Uh, we'll need to find a place in the deck. For sure. I'm still going to try. Like, I don't know. We'll try lots of stuff. Who the fuck converted Sarzik? I don't know. Not me, and I don't... It wasn't in any of the people's screenshots I took, so it must be Chinese community. Uh, Militally got nerfed, so it's going to not be playable. Well, teleport did not go through, interestingly enough. Sigvald got nerfed by one provision, so uh, rest in peace. Uh, I mean, my change, which was to Care Troll, would have had the same effect, except it would have also prevented Care Troll from being abused by Onslaught and Warriors. Now, nobody's going to nerf Kertrold and probably stop playing self loot also. Furco, that's a good change. Ulrich, that's a good change. Uh, DS Ire, fortunately, did not happen. Did it? It did not. Thank goodness. Um, Lirio's changes are not as... Except for Chariot. I mean, somebody else already did. Yeah, see, Lyria wanted Slave Driver nerfed rather than Sappers. These are all very good changes, none of which went through, except for the ones that happened, the one that happened to also be in the cars, the, these two, the cars list. So, you know, one of the most respected members of the community who created Lyria Hub, writes articles, one of the best players in the world. Not Nobody cares. Nobody cares. So, like, forget me, right? Forget me. Like, why aren't people 
en masse voting for what Lyria suggests? I don't know. Instead, P-Star, Necrotal, this went through, this went through, this went through, this went through, this went through. Fortunately, this did not. Uh, this went through, this went through, this went through, and this did not. I, yeah, I, I voted for Ceres Fearless. I saw it in Lirio's list, and that's why I put it in my list, because I, I agreed with it so much. I also agreed with with the uh, these two, but I, I knew that Sigma was getting nerfed, so I didn't vote for his foul blood. Because, like, what? If, if, if you nerf one card or another and both are auto-included in self-wounded, you're not... It doesn't matter which you nerf. Yeah, and it's a Polish game, by the way. <laughs> So these are some terrible changes. Luckily, this one did not go through. I'm like, learn to read. You can heat wave this. This is the Chinese community buffs that I knew about. So yeah, it wasn't Danny, actually. It was Chinese community who buffed Knights and Radea. They did not get Salamander Mage through. Patch isn't live yet, but we know the changes. Single BC list to compete. Wouldn't matter, Mammoth. It wouldn't matter. And also, uh, getting a bunch of people who grew up in a culture of self, individual self-expression uh, to all agree on one list uh, is, like, impossible. Like, when I say it wouldn't matter, right? I'm pretty sure I'm not anywhere close to the first person Russian viewers would go to watch, right? Well, let me show you. Where are my audiences from? Um, where is it? Doesn't show it here. Do, 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 do. Anyway, my number one like viewed country is is Russia. Like. The biggest group of my viewers are Russian, followed by Polish, followed by like American. So like th there's just like for every like pe person in NA who plays or likes or watches Gwent, like NA in Western Europe, there's like 10 people from Russia who play it. Probably because it's the only game that's like free to play friendly enough for them to be able to play or with sanctions and whatnot. I don't know. Or afford because of currency. Like Mentor deck was buffed. Uh it was not really. It got one provision on on frogs and one power on Melena. I wasn't running Triantbor. I might now. It wasn't buffed a lot. Uh I need a song title, sir. I'm gonna refund you. I, 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 I just put in the name of the artist and the song. The Witcher IP is huge in Russia. I didn't know that. Of Junior and Sergeant, again, are you for real? Uh, yeah. I mean, what do you want me to say, Dentalman? I predicted all this because I I've been around enough seasons to know everything Nick R says happens. You just like The Witcher. Does, is it because he looks? I don't know, is it culturally like a good fit? So this is Metallic Danny's list. He also had uh, this this two power guy. Like this is gonna instantly proc. Like there's no counterplay now. We can reconcile them. That what do you mean? Uh, thanks, Bogdan. Oh, yeah. Well, we all like The Witcher. That's not anything revealing. It, it, Dental, it was to buff Devotion Syndicate. Because, like, they're, they're like, oh, the, the Syndicate deck that's played the most is, is non-Devotion. And it plays Madame, and Syndicate is weak. We want to buff Syndicate. But not buff this deck that's already strong. How do we do that? We'll buff a card that's not in this deck. 
this is the this is the same approach that I constantly argue against that looks at like tries to like manually shift the meta by saying oh this card is a dwarf's only card and I want dwarves archetype to be better so I'm gonna buff a card that's only good in dwarves like armor's workshop and then what happens it gets played in Shiru like Well, that should be more than enough to decide cards. It should able to unplay cards. Well, I agree uh, to Maserati, and that's why if you look at my council, I was buffing Vez and Plumar and Imlarith and Seris Fearless. Logic of buffing Casita Bouncers because they they are seven points. No one's gonna play seven for five, but nine for five, yes, it will get played. Sorry, nine for six because you need. You need two 5P cards in your deck. No one was going to play 7 for 5. Uh, but you will play, you know, 9 for 6 with one Thinic. CB already got kind of big nerf. Maybe to undo a bit? What What is CB? Casino Bouncers. No, they never got a big nerf. They were 4 power, 5 provisions... They got changed to four power for provisions, which made them accessible from plunder, which was insane and stupid and should never have been done. That change got reverted so that they could be buffed to five power at five provisions each. Someone forgot plunder. No, they didn't, because I told as soon as people told me Nikar was going to change bouncers to four, I said, go tell him, go tell him about plunder. And they did. And he didn't change his vote. So. No, it's not a nerf. It's a revert. <laughs> My guy. People hearing nerf are going to sing something different than what you mean. Run free nerf super hard? No. Run free lost one provision. That's it. No. The, the, the words you choose have an impact on the people hearing them. And they will think a certain way if you say tomato, and they'll think a certain other way if you say, you know, San Marzano. And those two are not the same thing. So whatever effect you want to have, use the right word for that. No, no, bouncers don't need to be reverted to four. Because five power, five provisions is balanced. I think so, Lirio thinks so, and now Nick R also thinks so. Listen, the balance council is like a stock market. The individual moves are going to make zero rational sense. But over time, with the up and down and the exhaustion of the buyers and the sellers, you will arrive at a somewhat accurate equilibrium. So, like, the real answer to Sargent's is uh, that Nilfgaard needs a bit more point slam, but Sargent's are boring as fuck and overpowered when they are four base power. And so until Nilfgaard gets resolved into something that's playable, we're going to see Sergeant go back and forth. You think it's going to go evaluate them? Uh, yes, but it would serve no purpose, Lentoma. That's literally how I evaluate cards, how I suggest changes, is I have, I had, I put together a theoretical framework on how Balance Council changes should be done. I said that you should prioritize impact, uh, is the nerf justified and will it lead to a healthy meta? Uh, so impact is like, if I change uh, Nenekade by one power, will it start getting played? No, then that's not a good change, right? And it doesn't mean that like, if a card, like you shouldn't do gradual changes that take like two or three cycles, but it does mean that like, if you can in one cycle make a card that's not playable be playable and it deserves the buff and it won't lead to an unhealthy meta, then you should prioritize that. That's what it means. And you can apply that framework to every single change, and I've been consistent about it, and it doesn't matter. Because when someone who has like 500 voters on their side publishes a list, that's what's going to go through. How long is game down? It's supposed to only be an hour, but it has also been much longer be previous times. Unintentionally, so I don't know. Is Vicky with four power? You're wrong, Uncle Bogdan. Because it's 10 for 6? 
nobody else has 10 for sixes that have two armor and proc assimilate and can be used to uh, protect another engine. Man, there's a lot of golds that are 10 for sixes. <laughs> bots are voting from China? Well, if the bots can win 50 games and get to pro rank, then they're smarter than the average player. Ancient Bronze, I did say this, I did give an ultimatum that if they revert the Sergeant thing, we're going to make it 7 provisions. Perka buff is good. Perka buff is good. Um, so Danny wanted Treyhorn, Iteran, and Sapper nerf. Those happened. Madoc, yes, happened. These two did not. I'm glad Operator didn't get nerfed, but Master Puppets deserved a nerf. And then this is No Forgetting Justice, and this is Nagalfar. Barbara Gazi did not go through. So, it's very sad that Imlarith yet again did not go through. Uh, these are Shinmiri's votes. He was voting Milena, Morkvark, Ulula, Iteran, Musicians. So, of his changes, of the ones that Nick or Danny didn't vote for, the only one that went through is this, but the Chinese community also voted for this. So, basically, Shinmiri, who has like usually three times as many viewers as I do, has zero influence on the council. So even if Shinbir, Lear, and I were to combine and recommend the exact same thing, it wouldn't make a fucking difference. You don't play no ranks, and there are a lot of bots. They get 50 wins there. Wait, wins count in unranked, Big Pony? I thought they have to be 50 ranked wins. Musicians? No, musicians deserve the nerf. And this is Mr. Kerpitan's votes. Let's see. Didn't go through, didn't go through, didn't go through. This coincided with somebody else's, didn't go through, coincided with somebody else's. Literally nothing that only Kerpitan suggested went through. So he had absolutely zero impact also. For all the all the bitching that he did for me making fun of his, his votes, he had zero impact. I know, I know she didn't include stuff on the balance council, Reddit council. And then it, it like, I also have in the, like, I, the reason I put Milena in there was to, to align with the council. It wasn't in my list originally. But like, it doesn't matter. It, none of it goes through. When is the patch implemented? Usually within an hour. Madame and Phoenix was never a problem. Uh, Madoc and Phoenix, yeah. It, the issue was Letho, and instead of nerfing Letho, again, you like if you guys have complaints about this, go tell Nick. Right? Go tell Nick. He he's the one that matters. Like Pista and Necrotal are like so far off the deep end that is not worth wasting your time. Metallic Danny. I don't know what goes on with him. He has his things and and I tried to coordinate with him before and then it didn't work. So I think right now the only person that is worth discussing balance with is Nick R. So like, don't complain to me. Tell him why you think his changes were wrong and what would have been better. Four power is not a compromise. Bogdan, you haven't even been around, man. Stop having strong opinions. Lack you literally just got food. back after being AFK a for months. <laughs> Thanks you for the follow, uh, Laqualas. Like uh, be, be polite, it's me, please. Don't say just take a medicine. That's that's uncalled for. Like, Sargent had one of the highest play rates this season of any Nilfgaardian card. Like, uh, it, it was in every... Like, you just saw it in my tournament. Every NG deck had Sargents. It's fine at 3 power. It's amazing at 3 power. Yeah. Exactly. Try to come... No, Nazca is absolutely too good and too strong at three power compared to other bronzes of other factions. But 
it didn't need a nerf beyond getting to three power. I think it was fine there. Like not every card of every faction needs to be exactly the same level of power, right? It's okay for Nilfgaard to have the strongest 6P bronze. Somebody has to, and it's fine. Uh, toxic streamer, huh? <laughs> well, I'm so glad that we could buff Great Oak. And when we when it was buffed to 10, I said that's a bad change. And it only took the community three months to realize what I already knew three months ago. Same with Casino Bouncers. It's almost like I've been right from the start and yet somehow ignored. But, uh, you know, what the hell do I know? I'm just a 2450 Pipega who gets 2600 whenever he actually tries and doesn't play more than one deck. But whatever. You guys know best. There, that was Toxic Streamer for you. Who Nerf Oak? Uh, Nick. Type exclamation council for an album of uh, everybody's suggestions. And you can pinpoint exactly who whose changes went through. So Nick R wanted uh, Oak nerfed and it went through. Nick R wanted Cherry nerfed and it went through. Like, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 of Nick R's, uh, 24 went through. And then P Stars was like 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 of his 12 went through. Uh, and then Metallic Danny, one, two, three, every, uh, 10 of Metallic Danny's went through. And then Shinmiri's, uh, literally nothing, and Kerpatin, literally nothing, and Moshcraft, literally nothing. So that's what I'm saying. Like, please don't complain to me. Go talk to these guys. Nick, Peace Star, Necrotal, Metallic Danny. Yeah, I'm glad that we've stopped buffing and nerfing Thirsty Dam. Sure. It isn't the worst set of changes. Uh, this is pretty bad. This is a huge, this is a huge problem. It's really all of our fault. It's nobody's fault. If it's anybody's fault, it's CDPR's for implementing a shit system. When it was announced, I I predicted it would be shit. I said why it would be shit. I told them what wouldn't be shit, but it was they said it's too late to make any changes. Tug of War? No. Like all chaotic systems, it oscillates until it settles into equilibrium. If you zoom out, it looks very stable. It's insane to buff? I don't think it's insane to buff. I don't think it should have gotten nerfed. This is like, I'm okay with, but what I'm saying is, when you buff this stuff, like, ain't no way Firesworn's gonna be good. Unless it's like some abusive combo. Informant is a problem. You don't think Pirate Scope getting yet another provision? This is not two provisions for Pirate Scope, by the way. Is a problem. You don't think Junior getting one power and... and like, like Casino Bouncers will not give you a cut-up tag also? And they're playable? What do you suggest? Uh, what do you mean? For the council, what would have been a better system? Uh, so we all suggest stuff, right? The top the top half of the changes get implemented two weeks into the season. And then in those two weeks, we evaluate them. And at the end of the season, we say yes or no on each of the top 40 changes. And only the changes that had more than 50% support from the community are actually stay. The ones that fail the 50% check do not go through. And those cards are on cooldown for a month. That's what I would have suggested. That's what I would have done. Anything where you have a two-tier voting system. Because then, if I know what else is happening, right? Like, you could have 60 changes implemented for two weeks, and then 30 of those 60 get finalized. Or only the ones that are above 50%. Because... The only way that players will understand the ramifications of a change is for them to experience it. People are not good at predicting the effects of a change to a complex chaotic system 
just in the abstract. Like people, if I tell you most, I would say 99% of the player base in pro rank will not accurately predict what will happen. Uh, and oftentimes myself included, if you like change a card by one provision or power, it's, it's, it's like, what happens if you drop a leap on a pawn? Like, where will the, all the ripples go? Like, it's it's too complex. So let's just implement the stuff and then keep half of them that we like. Yeah, and it's much better to, 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 to experience it. Like... A lot of stuff, like, for example, Ball was really strong one season because it was a good counter to NR. And NR got nerfed, but so did Ball. So, it, it, it was, it was, um... I got you. Unplayed cards being buffed? Which unplayed cards are being buffed? Ithleen? And Fur card. Triad Boar. Rodeo is not an unplayed card. <laughs> I guess these two you could argue. Uh, these three. This was played in its deck, in its archetype. It has always been auto-include. It was auto-include. Even after it got nerfed to two power, it will still be auto-include after. This changes nothing. This is good. But I suggested this like four months ago. Again, again, like literally like any good thing that comes out is like something I suggested three months ago, including the reverts. <laughs> so just can we just skip the three month waiting time? Yeah, informant's a problem, not just because of Clog. It's also a buff to Vigo. Like, Junior wasn't necessary. Was too easy to win for power. It gets value on Deploy FW Web. It's an amazing card. There was not a single Devotion deck that didn't run Junior. And so what if it gets removed? Medicine was... It was... Main season was played in, in movement. Movement wasn't good. Like, if you want to, like, I'm going to say this very slowly. If you're unhappy that a card isn't played, buffing it is not the answer, necessarily. What is the answer? First, you should ask, why isn't this card played? If the reason it's not played is that it's too expensive, then let's reduce its provisions. If the reason it's not played is that it gets removed easily and gets no value on deploy, then we should increase its power, right? Increase its four. If the reason isn't one of those two things, then we shouldn't increase its power or provisions. Okay? Like, for example, for example, uh, Malena, not Malena, uh, what's the one that does four damage to four, one damage to four units or four damage to one unit? That card isn't played because it solves no problems. It is never a solution to any problem that you have. Unless you make it like four provisions, five provisions, at which point it be, it's like an eight for five, but it like it would be like OP in one situation and terrible in others. Malayan, yes. Informant buff is a huge buff. What was the reason? You'd have to ask Nick R. His, his community voted to buff Assimilate, and I don't know who comes up with the ways of buffing Assimilate, but like buffing Cupbearer or buffing Brothens were much better changes than buffing Informant. Tranbor is a buff, yes. The, a movement that gained two provisions and one power. And Tranbor doesn't require it to be played in movement. You can play... You can play Malena and Triambor in Precision Strike. I did. I, I will continue to do. This guy runs going now. Not now. He always has. Like. The, 
the main reason Ulrich wasn't played uh, is because it requires that you have the bronze in your hand, but it's a devotion card. So you're not going to play Triss Butterflies to grab the Fallen Knight. So it's a little less terrible now because 11 provisions was too much. But this is basically a Karanthir that lets formed. you play a bronze instead of play a card instead of uh, people like me. instead of spawning a one power version of it, and also boosted by two. So now this on a Fallen Knight, the Fallen Knight starts at seven. Ulrich on Fallen Knight means that Fallen Knight is needs to be tall punished, but Ulrich himself has Intimidate. So Ulrich Fallen Knight might see some play in Crimes decks, maybe. Okay. Like a crime deck with Hamelfart, Cleaver, maybe Jacques. Novograd also spawns things, don't forget. Like clicking Novograd. But a much better way to buff crimes was Ruben's Treasure, I think. I've tried Hybrid Crimes for a very long time. Uh, this will be a small buff to it. and but, but it's still really expensive. Like 10 provisions is a lot. I'd rather just play Igor than Ulrich. Igor's nine provisions and doesn't require that you have the card in your hand when you play it. Like you can you can tutor a fallen knight and then drop Igor and click it. Why community didn't think about decreasing SK warriors like warlords? Well, when you say community, who do you mean? Because Shinmiri last season tried to nerf a Highland Warlords, but nobody else voted for it. So uh, as far as why the Russian community doesn't want to nerf them, it's because they love warriors and they hate self food. Always have. Always will. As to why, I don't know. Ulrich equals Ramon? Uh, kind of, Brastian. But Ramon doesn't have a devotion requirement and is not an engine and doesn't give two points. It gives two power, two armor. Not quite the same thing, but yeah. Talk Nick to not buff Rothans because you played in a in a pool of card Henry shit in your deck. Not to buff Rothans because he will be in a pool of Oh, abduction? Okay, but you could Well why? What why does it matter? Like, there's lots of other good things from Abduction, uh, Henry. And if you're concerned about that, just nerf Henry. Is that really the logic? Oh my god. Informant's gonna be four provisions because Carpenter told Nick that he's worried about Henry creating brothels and it getting played from Abduction? Holy fucking mental moronic gymnastics, Batman! Are you serious? that isn't even played competitively today like if if henry ever becomes a problem i have a really creative it's gonna blow your brain solution if henry is a problem nerf henry that's the one when a card is a problem nerf that card don't do backflips because carpenter said abduction could pull brothens from your deck if if you're in a nilf card so because of one matchup an NG mirror where Henry could create a Brothens in your deck if you yourself don't play Brothens, which you probably will if Brothens was buffed. Both players would probably be playing Brothens anyway. You could also have buffed Brothens by power if you really wanted to buff Brothens. Not that Brothens needs a buff at all, by the way. Whether or not Brothens is a good card has everything to do with opportunity costs. Like, what do you have to cut to fit in Brothens? Well, if you have to cut uh, Anna or Lydia, like Lydia was a must-have this season because of Maddox, right? If Maddox's not around, you won't be playing Lydia and maybe you fit Brothens instead, right?
You could make Vilgefort's eight provisions. That would be a buff to Brothens. That would be, right? These things like have interplay, <laughs> but like it's good to consider like external factors, but a mirror matchup of two factions and only the times where both decks don't already have a Brothens and Henry happens to spawn a Brothens and you have abduction and there's nothing better than Brothens for you to abduction because like in an assimilate mirror, maybe if you play Brothens first, you don't want to because that Brothens can, can be copied by the- Moment 369 just traded with 37 views. <laughs> Yo, Obiama, thank you for the raid. I hope you had a good end of season. Yeah, it's going to be Kekker Aglaeus time. And the thing about Aglaeus is, like, somebody said, oh, I'm so glad that un underplayed cards are getting buffed. I'm not. About Torres too? Huh? Oh, okay. No, I understand. I understand not making Brothens 10 provisions. I didn't say Brothens should be 10 provisions. And your explanation is helpful, like, but informant is not the right way to do it. Heck, give a provision to double cross, give a provision to enslave. You could have done that. There's so many other ways to do this that don't involve informant to 4P. Informant is not a four provision card. The how good informant is has everything to do with how bronze, like what quality bronzes are being played right now. Because Brothens can be a brick if you're against decks that don't play good bronzes for you to copy. That, more than anything else, determines how good Brothens is. So, like, uh, you know, when... <laughs> when nobody's playing engines, Brothens is worse. And why would anyone play engines when Devil Maddock and Precision Strike are so common? So just nerf those, you're already buffing Assimilate. That's it. You don't have to buff it more. You don't need the Informant change. Diviner, good change. Burkhart, excellent change, right? Those are both very good changes. If you want to further buff Assimilate, we already buffed Lydia. That's done. Uh, you, you should nerf, you should nerf uh, decks that abuse Assimilate uh, when Assimilate has blue coin. You should nerf the tempo abuse. That's how you buff Assimilate, because Assimilate wants a long round and wants to not be bled. Like, because Assimilate's gonna play Calbeat, like deal with it. Okay? That's happening. Um, so so just nerf tempo abuse decks. And and then you're buffing like you don't have to you don't have to literally touch the thing to buff it. So if there was a lot of people who disagreed then just don't touch it see what happens yeah you'll, you'll put a wall hunt out in your decks or a tier is better and if you have it in round one you'll probably mulligan it the bc were a bit more like of democracy rather than direct democracy or just the two-tier runoff election we all suggest things, and then the things that have the most votes go for another round of votes. Because, like, you know, you know, I bet you, um, a lot of people think that some nerf to Maddox was good. But I don't think anybody thinks that Sapper, Maddox, and Letho, all three, needed to be nerfed in the same patch. And if we could see what the other changes are, then we could uh, we could vote on them as a package or vote yes or no. It would be good. It has democracy is not the issue. It's the implementation. Epic Necker movement deck. Uh, not if assimilate is meta. Is the game still down? As far as I know, yes. Let me double check. Like one one obsidian mirror and uh, movement is dead. It gets countered. The entire archetype gets countered by a four provision Nilfgaard card. It's, plus everyone will have informants now. 
So it's even worse. Like, like I'll have two cat witches, he'll have 16. Who's gonna win? It, it's not gonna, like, I'm not super excited about it. My deck is usually good in rent pre-seasons because people don't heat wave the, the defender or the or the Because we have to nerf something, otherwise we will see a lot of brain dead nerf by Pepegas. For for power reduction? Nerf Letho by one provision was the only nerf that was needed. And, and for power reduction, I had some suggestions. Griffin Witcher, Vigo, Eudora. I didn't see any of these come up in any of your conversations. Why is Vigo still at three power? It, he does not need three power. Why is Eudora a million times better than Aileron? It's a million times better than Hubert. It's a million times better than Imlerith. It's even better than Flying Redanian, arguably. No one, uncle, and I'm not a psychologist. What, what the fuck kind of question is that? And therefore buff to Philvandral? I think it's a buff. Nerf Lara to four power? No! Johnny, shut up! The last thing this game needs is a buff to Tatterwing. Holy crap, what a binary dumb ass deck. All, all depends on round one draws. 100% decided in round one. I don't even play round two against Tatterwing uh, sometimes, depending on how round one goes, because I know how the game's going to go. No, it's not a response to how people feel. It's a response to the fact that it was giga, giga prevalent on the meta and the fact that uncoordinated nerfs went through. So see, Nick R only nerfed Maddox by one. Okay. He only nerfed Letho by one power. That's all he did. And he figured that's enough. But then P-Star and, uh, and Necrotal nerfed Tappers and Phoenix. So that's three. And they didn't nerf Letho at all. So like, I bet you even P-Star and Necrotal didn't want all three nerfs. They probably only wanted two nerfs. But we have no visibility. The system is shit. Hey, can you stop bad mouthing people, Uncle? I will time you out. Only I'm allowed to be toxic here. You are never getting informant in hand. Oh yeah, it's actually kind of bad. Right, right. In a Calvite deck, I can't draw informants anymore. Uncle, I'm not interested. Don't shit talk people behind their back. You can you can criticize his vote all you want. Call him stupid. Call him idiotic. But like, don't attack something people can't change. Like, oh, he's weird. He has a weird personality. Like, people don't choose that. You can make fun of people's actions or people's choices. Yeah, I hadn't thought about the whole fact that Informant won't be... You can't ever draw it unless you got it in round one. So how many games are going to be decided by... I mean, granted, every single deck, assimilate deck for sure, is going to have two Informants anyway. You're not going to miss both of them. Plus, you'll run Brothens and Vigo. Because both of those got a provision buff. Well, kind of. Despite a few questionable changes and some over... Honestly, looks like a pretty good council. We'll see. Because uh, the meta might just become an Arendite deck with discard package. That just might become one of the meta decks. Okay, no one cares who you don't like. Your personal Burkhardt was Mac by idea? Good. Burkhardt has been in my list a long time. A long time. Here. When did I make this? Like, months ago? There. Furcart. See? Furcart. Lydia. 
Diviner. Since like last year. Yeah, I'll make it dark. Look, Master of Puppets. Pray her. Vigo. Yeah, and Seret. Seret deserves two buffs. One power, one provision. For ST, I've had Merlega, Etriol. This already went through. I had Simless power decrease. I had Aquan provision increase, but changed my mind on it probably. But Spring Equinox. I wanted to buff Harmony. I wanted to buff Devo Symbiosis. Yes, Chief. Uh, just type exclamation balance. It's Assassin's Creed soundtrack. This is this is probably okay. It is a buff to Soul Warriors though, and now they have Care Troll. I, I link the song. Ng Bandit Informant Sergeant spam season instead of Madoc. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's what's going to happen. It's a buff to Mill, by the way. They can operate her a Kingslayer and then Informant it. Informant will be everywhere. This is such a poorly thought out change. How do you not understand the, the fucking gigantic buff that is making a Bronze 4 provisions? It is literally the most extreme and high impact thing you can do in Gwent is make a 5p be 4p. It's, you're making it a million times more powerful. It should be the last thing we do. There should be n almost never 5 to 4p provision changes in this game. Like, it should be like, oh my god, this card is utter shit and will never see play unless we make it 4 provision. Like, for example, Wyvern. That's a card that you can make 4 provisions. Hey, Space Daddy. So it would have been nerfed much harder already if he were a monster card? Of course it would have, Johnny. Of course it would have. Reckless Flurry got buffed. Yep. Uh, Nilf Knight got buffed. Who knows why? This is just the... Like, somebody buffed this thinking... Probably the tag down thinking... Oh, we don't see much Toussaint. Toussaint is a different flavor of Nilf guard. And we should buff Toussaint. How do we do that? Well, let's let's buff one of their bronzes by giving it one power. When in reality, all you've done with this is you've buffed slave drivers. Because slave drivers will help you copy spotters. And one power on Nilf Knight is seven points to a slave driver deck. Uh, sorry, a, a spotter spam deck. Congratulations. Sorry, JCM. I don't I don't have anything in me to be taught. Like, I'm already above above the toxic threshold or whatever. Try her nerf, whatever, fine. I don't care. But like the middle decks I played against last season, uh Treyarn would never have made a difference. What what would make a difference if you really want to nerf mill is uh Kingslayer. Because they only play one Treyarn, but they play seven Kingslayers. Did not come up annoys me. Yes, annoys me as well. So let's let's rate this patch, okay? Let's go through and and give this patch a score. Um, Pirates Cove minus two. According to Kerpatin, this was already the best Syndicate deck. 
Reckless Flurry. Uh, minus two. All this is is a buff to Brain Dead Arendite spam. And of course, Shin will be happy because it's buffed to shoot his shoot deck. Mass Life Fury? Uh, I kind of am okay with this. But Care Trolled absolutely needs a nerf. Renfrey, this was a dumb change. Um, I'll do minus one. Like, uh, Renfrey is very good, but also, like, Renfrey herself wasn't the reason. It was, like, the thinners. Literally, uh, unnecessary change. Like, just because just you don't like playing against this, and neither do I, doesn't mean you should kill the card. It wasn't, it wasn't that strong. And if it's beating some control decks, good. Like, some decks like this existing is not bad. Plus, you could nerf Priestess and then hit both Militarily and Priestess at the same time without, like, it's, it was already barely worth putting Militarily in a deck over a second Priestess. Maddox, unnecessary change because, like, for example, the ST Maddox decks were not, were not uh, OP. It was only the NG one. Flotsam, yes, good change. Very good change. I mean, really, it's because Temerians, but Flotsam is also very strong. Uh, on Scouts, for example, in Golden Eckers. Sigvald, I don't like this change. Um, Care Trolled was the better change. Iris Companions, uh, this is a consistency card. I don't like why, I don't get why we're nerfing those. Uh, you already re nerfed Renfri. Like, Renfri is where, and if you want the carryover abuse to be nerfed, then you nerf the other one, not the Companions. Temerian Infantry, um, yes, this is a good change. This card is toxic, so I don't care if it dies. Ulrich, uh, this is a good change. Just, just, just to bring it in line with, like you guys have said, Ramon. Novi Justice, uh, I'm gonna give it a plus one because I'm worried about dwarves now. That's another provision for a dwarf deck that already had so many provisions. It's just, when you give so many provisions to a deck, you're just begging for it to be a mid-range ha heaven. And like, Carry a nerf won't matter when every card in your in your hand starts with an extra armor in, in the Mahakam Forge deck. Iplin? No. This is a dumb thing. I know some of you are like, yeah, I don't ever see that card. Let's buff it. It's an underplayed card. But that's... Eglaeus is as binary as it gets. It's dumber than Kelly. I would rather play 50 games against Kelly than 50 games against Eglaeus. Except I would get a lot of MMR against Eglaeus, but that's not the point. Because against Eclaeus, all that matters, literally the only thing that matters is do you win round one or not? Do you get last say or not? Because if you can bleed out the Eclaeus or have last say and tall punish the Eclaeus, then all of their deck is worth zero. Their entire fucking game plan is dead. So I don't know why anybody wants to buff this card. This is a stupid card. I know big number fun, but like, you're not going to have fun when every game is decided by your round one draws. Why don't you just flip a coin and don't even queue for Gwet? Just flip a coin and be like, oh, heads, I win. Yay, I'm the winner. And then go for a 15-minute walk and do us all a favor instead of queuing into, into ladder with the fucking Iglaeus deck. Nagopar, fine. It's a conditional, uh, one of the worst tutors as far as the, the faction devotion ones. And now it's on the same tier as Isengrim's Council. It's a good change. Frog mating season? Uh, I don't think this card needed a buff, but because now it's a 12 for 7, not counting the movement synergy. That's a little bit much. Like Malena, good. Trianbor, good. You could nerf the you could buff the Milva, the immune Milva. Uh you could you could have buffed Mentors by one power. So they're like mentors get a ton of value if they stick. But like they're in a short round, they're terrible, so you could have buffed their four, right? Um you could have buffed the four provision guy that moves stuff by one power. Not the five P one, the four provision one. Orko the Sculptor, this is a very good change because uh, I hope that this continues to all of the, the two power tutors that are for a faction specific uh, type of special. Three on board, this is a good change. It was just too expensive at seven, even in a deck that took full advantage of synergies. Per card plus two, informant minus three. So that's four, five, and four, nine, nine and two, 11. Minus 11 there. And then plus uh, two, four, five. So that's minus six for for provision increase. For power, a decrease. Uh, three, five, six, eight, ten, twelve. 
And then minus four and three, minus seven. So minus six plus five. So overall, this top half. Is plus uh, minus one. Basically, like the game is the same level of good or bad. Okay, now let me catch up on chat because I wasn't able to see chat for a while. Patch rated potato out of ten. Yes, uh, military was boring, but fine. Yes, Siggy is going ten fucking provisions. What Siggy? So, oh, Sigvald, yeah. So, oh, shoot, the Sigvald, yeah. Like, why why prevent Golden Ecker Cell Phone from being playable? And this Golden Ecker deck not gonna smurf? No, it's not gonna smurf. It has no control, it has no answers, it's still a binary dumb archetype. I remember once our Lord and Savior Future Briefs made a Sienna and Glaze deck, watched the video, good fun, came against it on ladder, saw it coming a mile away, nuked his defender, and he BM me constantly. Let me get Sienna down, even though I could have answered her. Let, let him get Sienna, even though I could have answered it. Dude got a 130 point Iglesias, but I had, let's say, an artifact compression. Exactly. Like, that's literally, that's literally Iglesias. It's weird trash. Or a nice tube transform, or a fucking Shillard. Like, there's a million ways to just completely demolish Iglesias. It will never be good. It's not a good card. It's not a well designed. It's binary. It's dumb. Why are you asking out briefs? <laughs> you saw night buff, but it's, because it's a problem of slave driver and spotter. Spotter is not played. Spotter is fine. Spotter needs a power buff. But like Nilf Knight is a very good card. It's a ten for five in Tucson. Why did it need a buff? Eleven for five, rather. Sorry, in Tucson it's eleven for five. It's a very good card. You could also. Put a Nilf Knight in the opponent's graveyard and play 12-point Illusionist over and over again. That's also fine. But then if Adepts though, no one knows who did it. Every deck he was in was like tier 3 at best. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it was a dumb buff. The card was fucking annoying. Four provision cards should not require a Tall Punish to, or a lock to remove. For five, right. 11 for five is very good. Yeah. Raging Bear is perfectly fine at 8. Nilf Knight was also fine. Yeah, it was perfectly balanced. It was one of the good 5P cards. Okay. It's, it's nine power, so now Geralt can kill it. Like now you're giving a Geralt target. It's arguably even worse for Tucson. Not 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 for Tucson, but for like non-Tucson decks, I guess. Because like NG soldiers doesn't have anything go above nine usually. Not until they play Triss. Now they have a Geralt target. Not that anyone's gonna play Geralt now that Renfrey's dead. Like Renfrey being playable made a lot of cards that otherwise saw no play be playable. Like Cosimo, like Geralt and uh, like <laughs> like Tris Butterflies or Matter. I don't know. It we need you don't have to kill everything you don't like. If it's too strong, nerf its power slightly. Don't like Okay, Redea plus one power? Zero. I don't care. I don't really want Shoop to get buffed. I don't think the Redea having one more point is gonna be a big deal. Since Erlen is no longer a problem. Horson Jr., uh, like I said, this was unnecessary. It's not the worst change in the world, but it's like, this was one of the best cards already in Syndicate. Now it's even more auto-include. We should be buffing the cards that are not auto-include. Okay? That's not... And we should be nerfing the cards that are auto-include. Not that, like... That shouldn't, like, just because something's auto doesn't mean you have to nerf it. But if you have... Like, if you could nerf between Sigvald and Svalblood and Care Trolled... Care Trolled! Because it's in every fucking Skellige deck ever since it's been released, and not a day has gone by 
when when it hasn't been auto included in every single Skellige deck to the point where even Alchemy plays it. Because why the fuck not? So nerf that. It's why is that not obvious? Why do I have to even say this out loud? Whatever. Malena five to six, good change. Um, it's a buff to movement, but it's not as good as you guys think because you can now stick this and tree and bar in literally any any uh like like why would anyone play poly right poly has on deploy what this has with the cooldown one this also has zeal so like melena you just put it in your deck as a even if you're playing precision strike mid-range why well if you ever run to alumni they're fucked it works on junior oh sorry freak show uh it it, it screws over like uh, potentially Ogroids, right? You can use it to line up Ignis and Shirus and Brehens, and you can use it to line up like uh, you can you can use it to to mess with cards like Sentry, like and Nilfgaard can copy it and and yoink it and like against NG when I'm playing movement, I don't play Milena because Milena can end your career. They could have two Milenas to your one because it's a goal. Like if if they Taurus it, you're also fucked. So I I took it out of my deck when Enslave was better. So like. People see something that's like, oh, it's a buff to movement. Mosscraft must be happy. No, because it's not that simple. Sergeant, okay, minus 69. The stupidest shit. No, I mean, no. But it, it's a dumb change. I'm just so tired of it. Uh, I think this was an unnecessary change. This was a very good change. This was a very bad change. This was a very good change. This was... I'll allow it. Because it wasn't even played at five provisions. Now, it might have to go back to six provisions at five power. If it ends up being really strong. This is a fine change. I don't like think it's bad, but it's not good either. This is a good change. And begrudgingly, I'll say this is a good change because I don't like carryover abuse. But I like that it was just playable in some decks as a one-off. And why couldn't we just nerf Letho? Like... And by me, by provision, not by power. In fact, I'm going to give minus one to this. Because this means this will never get provision nerfed. This is a bad change. It's a buff to Priestess. Why? And buff to Golden Necker YOLO decks. Like, why? Iteran of Ulvia. I know a lot of people are happy because they think Iteran is cheesy. But this makes it even more binary. This now makes it easier to answer. So it means that you're, you're only going to want to play Iteran behind a defender. Or in like mobilization where you drop it and you click the same turn. And then your opponent is like, do I kill the three Reavers or do I kill the Iteran? It, it, it doesn't solve a problem. Any nerf to Treyhorn is a good nerf. Fuck that card. Uh, Sapper. Dumb change. I hate playing as Devil Maddox, but th this is a nerf to every... Maddox deck. And while I'm personally not at all a fan of Maddox or Maddox decks, just the intellectual, like, Quasi blindness just of this. Followed. Yo, thanks for the follow. Um, like, just just the irrationality yeah, and the language. illogic of this change, oh, instead of nerfing Slave Driver, offends me at a philosophical level. So I'm giving it minus two. Uh, Chen, it's been good for a long time, so I'm going to give it plus one. But the problem is, I don't think this addresses any of the reasons why Precision Strike Renfree was, was so oppressive. And oppressive not because it's, like, too strong. It is very strong, but not OP. But, like, oppressive in the sense of it's easy to play and suffocates the meta by making every deck be scared of losing on even from blue coin because it has so much tempo. Incredible amounts of consistency and basically unlimited control. Unlimited, like, like on a really high number of answers while also shitting out good tempo. Like, control that should not have good tempo. This deck had control, tempo, and consistency. Like, it was a triple threat. And nerfing Chariot by one power addresses not the control, not the consistency, and not really the tempo. Oh my god, it played seven, uh, six instead of seven. Or seven instead of eight if they play Iris. Like, that doesn't... But... Nerf to Great Oak, nerf to Iris. Man Those zero, combined with underscore Chariot underscore change might be enough to make that deck less played. And people will see this and be like, oh, Chariot nerf was a good nerf. But it wasn't. It was the wrong way to address it because uh, the real reasons why it was Tony like... Underscore 100 underscore anyway, I was splitting hairs at this point. 
Yuzhen Blaviken, this is a good change. Uh, it's still very good. Three points is still three points of tempo in round one that you did nothing for. Uh, like, it automatically was there from the start of the game, and it makes your round one draws better. Yes, That's West very good. Um, and it will still be very good. It will just be like a free Knickers instead of a free Leave Roach. Griffin Witcher Adept, this is a good revert. I didn't vote for it. I didn't. I, I initially had it in my list and I took it out. But this should have never been made 5 power. That was a dumb change and everybody realized it, apparently. It wasn't even recommended by me or any other streamer or any of the Russian content creators. This was a, either a Chinese community change or a grassroots movement by people who were offended by my god a four provision card should not require muzzle to be answered so if we were to add up the positives from power increase we get two four six eight so plus eight and the negatives are one two three four five minus five so this is plus three if you're messaging me, I can't see you right now because I'm doing the screenshot thing. Uh, we have positives in this one are two, three, five, six, seven, nine. So plus nine. And the negatives are one, that's four, six, minus six. So another plus three. So overall, this patch was plus five out of um, if there's 10 changes per category and we gain ne negative and positive so plus five out of 20 I guess because that's the max well I guess the max is 40 but it's 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 negative 20 to 20 it's plus five so i'm gonna say uh just to make it more reasonable 25 out of 40. it's the same thing i'm not changing the score it's just this this is a more like when you see 25 out of 40 you understand better what i'm trying to say how do i know the results already uh they, the playquent.com website uh, has the stuff early, and I think uh, the patch itself can be data mined. I think uh, is is this the guy posted by a subreddit? Autonomous Golem. Somebody like used uh, something to scrape the data. Stop hate oak. It's just one power. Oak will be oak will be a 17 for 12 instead of an 18 for 12. It doesn't make a difference. It still has the same removal capacity and it's just one less tempo. It's fine. If anything, it me means that you can now play oak. Uh, no, he still gets Geralted. Yeah, good changes aren't gonna like, like the triad bore isn't gonna suddenly make the meta friendly to engines, uh, and and neither is like the nerf to Renfri gonna somehow make mid range decks not be played. None of these things are gonna fundamentally change anything. If anything, mid range is getting a buff, and warriors are getting a buff, and zero nerfs. So warriors will even be more prevalent now, because because the decks that could abuse them when from red have all been nerfed. Griffin Witcher still five power. Yeah, that was a problem, much more so than Adepts. I rate this council 25 out of 40. Okay, I'm gonna end the YouTube video here. I don't wanna get to get too long.